Figure of the Earth is a term of art in geodesy that refers to the size and shape used to model Earth. The size and shape it refers to depend on context, including the precision needed for the model. The sphere is an approximation of the figure of the Earth that is satisfactory for many purposes. Several models with greater accuracy have been developed so that coordinate systems can serve the precise needs of navigation, surveying, cadaster, land use, and various other concerns. Motivation <inaudible> 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 Earth's topographic surface is apparent with its variety of land forms and water areas. This topographic surface is generally the concern of topographers, hydrographers, and geophysicists. While it is the surface on which Earth measurements are made, mathematically modeling it while taking the irregularities into account would be extremely complicated. The Pythagorean concept of a spherical Earth offers a simple surface that is easy to deal with mathematically. Many astronomical and navigational computations use a sphere to model the Earth as a close approximation. However, a more accurate figure is needed for measuring distances and areas on the scale beyond the purely local. Better approximations can be had by modeling the entire surface as an oblate spheroid, using spherical harmonics to approximate the geoid, or modeling a region with a best-fit reference ellipsoids. For surveys of small areas, a planar flat model of Earth's surface suffices because the local topography overwhelms the curvature. Plane table surveys are made for relatively small areas without considering the size and shape of the entire Earth. A survey of a city, for example, might be conducted this way. By the late 1600s, serious effort was devoted to modeling the Earth as an ellipsoid, beginning with Jean Picard's measurement of a degree of arc along the Paris meridian. Improved maps and better measurement of distances and areas of national territories motivated these early attempts. Surveying instrumentation and techniques improved over the ensuing centuries. Models for the figure of the Earth improved in step. In the mid to late 20th century, research across the geosciences contributed to drastic improvements in the accuracy of the figure of the Earth. The primary utility of this improved accuracy was to provide geographical and gravitational data for the inertial guidance systems of ballistic missiles. This funding also drove the expansion of geoscientific disciplines, fostering the creation and growth of various geoscience departments at many universities. These developments benefited many civilian pursuits as well, such as weather and communication satellite control and GPS location finding, which would be impossible without highly accurate models for the figure of the Earth. <laughs> <laughs> models The models for the figure of the Earth vary in the way they are used, in their complexity, and in the accuracy with which they represent the size and shape of the Earth. <laughs> Sphere The simplest model for the shape of the entire Earth is a sphere. The Earth's radius is the distance from Earth's center to its surface, about 6,371 km 3,959 miles. While «radius» normally is a characteristic of perfect spheres, the Earth deviates from spherical by only a third of a percent, sufficiently close to treat it as a sphere in many contexts and justifying the term the radius of the Earth". The concept of a spherical Earth dates back to around the 6th century BC, but remained a matter of philosophical speculation until the 3rd century BC. 
The first scientific estimation of the radius of the Earth was given by Eratosthenes about 240 BC, with estimates of the accuracy of Eratosthenes' measurement ranging from 2% to 15%. The Earth is only approximately spherical, so no single value serves as its natural radius. Distances from points on the surface to the center range from 6,353 km to 6,384 km 3,947 to 3,968 miles Several different ways of modeling the Earth as a sphere each yield a mean radius of 6,371 km 3,959 miles. Regardless of the model, any radius falls between the polar minimum of about 6,357 km and the equatorial maximum of about 6,378 km 3,950 to 3,963 miles. The difference 21 km 13 miles correspond to the polar radius being approximately 0.3% shorter than the equator radius. Ellipsoid of revolution Since the Earth is flattened at the poles and bulges at the equator, geodesy represents the figure of the Earth as an oblate spheroid. The oblate spheroid, or oblate ellipsoid, is an ellipsoid of revolution obtained by rotating an ellipse about its shorter axis. It is the regular geometric shape that most nearly approximates the shape of the Earth. A spheroid describing the figure of the Earth or other celestial body is called a reference ellipsoid. The reference ellipsoid for Earth is called an Earth ellipsoid. An ellipsoid of revolution is uniquely defined by two quantities. Several conventions for expressing the two quantities are used in geodesy, but they are all equivalent to and convertible with each other. Equatorial radius display styler called semimior axis and polar radius b display style b called semiminor axis a display styler and eccentricity e display style e a display styler and flattening f display style f eccentricity and flattening are different ways of expressing how squashed the ellipsoid is when flattening appears as one of the defining quantities in geodesy generally it is expressed by its reciprocal for example, in the WGS84 spheroid used by today's GPS systems, the reciprocal of the flattening 1 f display style 1 f is set to be exactly 298.257223563. The difference between a sphere and a reference ellipsoid for Earth is small, only about one part in 300. Historically, flattening was computed from grade measurements. Nowadays, geodetic networks and satellite geodesy are used. In practice, many reference ellipsoids have been developed over the centuries from different surveys. The flattening value varies slightly from one reference ellipsoid to another, reflecting local conditions and whether the reference ellipsoid is intended to model the entire Earth or only some portion of it. A sphere has a single radius of curvature, which is simply the radius of the sphere. More complex surfaces have radii of curvature that vary over the surface. The radius of curvature describes the radius of the sphere that best approximates the surface at that point. 
Oblate ellipsoids have constant radius of curvature east to west along parallels, if a graticule is drawn on the surface, but varying curvature in any other direction. For an oblate ellipsoid, the polar radius of curvature R P is larger than the equatorial R P equals a two B display style R underscore P equals frac a carrot two B because the pole is flattened, the flatter the surface, the larger the sphere must be to approximate it. Conversely, the ellipsoid's north-south radius of curvature at the equator R E display style r underscore e is smaller than the polar r e equals b two a display style r underscore e equals frac b caret two a where a display style a is the distance from the center of the ellipsoid to the equator semi-major axis and b display style b is the distance from the center to the pole semi-minor axis topic <laughs> geoid It was stated earlier that measurements are made on the apparent or topographic surface of the Earth and it has just been explained that computations are performed on an ellipsoid. One other surface is involved in geodetic measurement, the geoid. In geodetic surveying, the computation of the geodetic coordinates of points is commonly performed on a reference ellipsoid closely approximating the size and shape of the Earth in the area of the survey. The actual measurements made on the surface of the Earth with certain instruments are however referred to the geoid. The ellipsoid is a mathematically defined regular surface with specific dimensions. The geoid, on the other hand, coincides with that surface to which the oceans would conform over the entire Earth if free to adjust to the combined effect of the Earth's mass attraction gravitation and the centrifugal force of the Earth's rotation. As a result of the uneven distribution of the Earth's mass, the geoidal surface is irregular and, since the ellipsoid is a regular surface, the separations between the two, referred to as geoid undulations, geoid heights, or geoid separations, will be irregular as well. The geoid is a surface along which the gravity potential is everywhere equal and to which the direction of gravity is always perpendicular see equipotential surface. The latter is particularly important because optical instruments containing gravity reference leveling devices are commonly used to make geodetic measurements. When properly adjusted, the vertical axis of the instrument coincides with the direction of gravity and is, therefore, perpendicular to the geoid. The angle between the plumb line which is perpendicular to the geoid sometimes called the vertical and the perpendicular to the ellipsoid sometimes called the ellipsoidal normal is defined as the deflection of the vertical. It has two components, an east-west and a north-south component. Other shapes The possibility that the Earth's equator is better characterized as an ellipse rather than a circle and therefore that the ellipsoid is triaxial has been a matter of scientific controversy for many years. Modern technological developments have furnished new and rapid methods for data collection and, since the launch of Sputnik 1, orbital data have been used to investigate the theory of ellipticity. 
A second theory, more complicated than triaxiality, proposed that observed long periodic orbital variations of the first Earth satellites indicate an additional depression at the South Pole accompanied by a bulge of the same degree at the North Pole. It is also contended that the northern middle latitudes were slightly flattened and the southern middle latitudes bulged in a similar amount. This concept suggested a slightly pear-shaped Earth and was the subject of much public discussion. Modern geodesy tends to retain the ellipsoid of revolution as a reference ellipsoid and treat triaxiality and pear shape as a part of the geoid figure. They are represented by the spherical harmonic coefficients c 22 s 22 display style c underscore 22 s underscore 22 and c 30 display style c underscore 30 respectively corresponding to degree and order numbers 2.2 for the triaxiality and 3.0 for the pear shape simpler local approximations are possible e.g. osculating sphere and local tangent plane Earth rotation and Earth's interior Determining the exact figure of the Earth is not only a geodetic operation or a task of geometry, but is also related to geophysics. Without any idea of the Earth's interior, we can state a «constant density» A 5.515 grams per cc and, according to theoretical arguments, see Leonard Euler, Albert Wangerin, etc., such a body rotating like the Earth would have a flattening of 1 to 230. In fact, the measured flattening is 1 to 298.25, which is closer to a sphere and a strong argument that Earth's core is very compact. Therefore, the density must be a function of the depth, ranging from 2.6 g per cc at the surface rock density of granite, etc., up to 13 g per cc within the inner core, see structure of the Earth. <laughs> Global and regional gravity field Also with implications for the physical exploration of the Earth's interior is the gravitational field, which can be measured very accurately at the surface and remotely by satellites. True vertical generally does not correspond to theoretical vertical deflection ranges up to 50 inches because topography and all geological masses disturb the gravitational field. Therefore, the gross structure of the Earth's crust and mantle can be determined by geodetic geophysical models of the subsurface. Volume The volume of the reference ellipsoid is V. Four thirds pi are two b, where a and b are its semimior and semiminor axes. Using the parameters from WGS eighty four ellipsoid of revolution, a six thousand three hundred and seventy eight one hundred and thirty seven kilometers and b. Topic Six thousand three hundred and fifty six point seven five two three one four two kilometres V one point zero eight three two one times one thousand and twelve cubic kilometres two point five nine eight eight times ten eleven CU me Topic See also Clairaut's theorem EGM 96 
Horizon sections distance and curvature Meridian arc Theoretical gravity Gravity formula Gravity of Earth History Flat Earth Pierre Bouguer Friedrich Robert Helmert History of the meter Seconds pendulum Topic notes and references Guy Bomford, Geodesy, Oxford 1962 and 1880. Guy Bomford, Determination of the European Geoid by Means of Vertical Deflections. RPT of Com, 14, IUGG 10th General Ars, Rome 1954. Karl Ledersteger and Gottfried Gerst Bach, Die Horizontal Isostasy, Das Isostatische Geoid 31. Ordnung. Geowissenschaftliche Mittelungen Band 5, 2 Wien 1975. Helmut Moritz and Bernhard Hoffmann, Physical Geodesy. Springer, Wien and New York 2005. Geodesy for the Layman, Defense Mapping Agency, St. Louis, 1983. External links Reference ellipsoids PCI Geomatics Reference ellipsoids Scanex Changes in Earth shape due to climate changes Joss Lays, "...the shape of planet Earth", 